Hey, what's up, everybody? Oh, I see we already got some of you on here. Steven, what's going on, Steven? Make sure you guys uh, give a little post as you jump in here. Uh, throw something in the chat bar. We'll throw it up on the screen. I'm excited that you're going to be joining us today. And I have on here Mr. Brian Kurtz. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so happy to be here. I love, I love, I love it. Anytime I can be a CEO warrior. I'm like, I'm all over it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm excited to have you because uh, for some of you that are just joining in and stuff, uh, Brian, just so you know, and what's up, Gabe? Brian is, and, and I'm sure he's not going to get a big head because he doesn't have that in him. He's probably one of the nicest guys in the world. Um, but besides being nice, he is super wicked smart, everybody, on so many things. So... Um, I want Brian just to tell all of you a little bit about himself. So, Brian, give a little intro: who you are, what you do, and that type of stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll um, you know, I'm, I'm a I'm a serial direct marketer, um, but I disguise myself as a as a little league high school baseball umpire. And since today's baseball opening day, um, I'll lead with the fact that I'm a, an amazing umpire. Um, and uh, actually, we could talk about that if you want, because like people ask me why I would umpire. And the connections to marketing are actually much more than you think. So I'll leave that as an open loop teaser, which is a term we use in in copywriting and direct marketing. If you want to go there, um, but anyway, I'm a, I'm a serial direct marketer, and what that means is um, I've been doing marketing my whole life. Um, I helped build a company called Boardroom Incorporated. Um, it was a newsletter and book company. It's known as being kind of one of those. Uh, iconic uh, uh, direct marketing companies. We had a newsletter called Bottom Line Personal that was the largest consumer newsletter in the country. Um, for the, you know, just because um, you don't know who I am and you probably even don't, don't even know what direct marketing is maybe, but I'm a slave to measurable marketing. What I mean by measurable, everything I spent in marketing over my 37 years pays for itself. It It has to have an ROI. That's like, that's my game. My game is uh, direct marketing. So what I did at Boardroom is uh, I mailed probably around 2 billion pieces of direct mail, did not lick every stamp. Um, I probably sold, you know, without bragging. Again, it's not bragging if you did it. So I'm not, and again, you know, it's very hard for me to brag. But what I will say is um, I, not, I, I basically did billions of dollars, you know, worth of business over, you know, 37 years, but I sold like $39 at a time, which is kind of neat, you know, and what you have to do to sell $39 books and newsletters is a lot different than selling services like, like your guys do or selling what you do, Mike, you know, um, you know, high end coaching groups, like, and I do the same thing you do. So, but all the skills are the same. All the skills are the same. It's all direct marketing. It's all about measuring the response, measuring what you pay for, Whatever you buy in terms of your advertising, whether it's a magazine space ad, Valpac, direct mail, email, uh, display online, whatever you do, it's got to pay out. So that's what I did for my whole career. And we, you know, built a business that when I got to Boardroom was about, I don't know, three to five million dollars. Um, it reached a height of about one hundred and sixty million dollars um, in the mid 2000s. And I left there um, three, oh, yeah, like over three years ago, because um, I really wanted to go out and start teaching. I really wanted to take everything I had learned on the client side. And now I'm building groups like you are, Mike. I think that's why you and I get along so well. I think that, you know, we both have this incredible need to take what we've learned, what we've experienced, and give it to a tribe for them to go out and be great. And I know that if I can teach the principles of direct marketing, I've written one book on direct marketing. In fact, um, I think a lot of your, your, your core customers have my book, The Advertising Solution. And I'm writing another book called Measurable Marketing. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I'll be 60 years old in a, in a little over a month, a, a two mo less than two months. And I got another 35 years or so to keep doing this stuff. I mean, I'm just, I love it. I just love direct marketing. I'm a, I, and, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's been my life. It's always going to be my life. And I love it because, and now we'll go back to your, your audience and the people who are watching and listening. 
that the reason why I love being connected to you and your tribe is that if I can give them the skills that I've learned to sell subscriptions, newsletters, all the things that I've been involved with, and they can have a service business that they love, a service business that, you know, that they're beating the competition because they're delivering such incredible value like you did with your business. I mean, your business, I, I, I marveled at what you did at Gold Medal. And so, you know, I know that teaching service professionals, the skills of, of traditional fundamentals of direct marketing is like one plus one equals nine. Yeah. And so that's why I'm involved with you. That's why, you know, you're in my mastermind group. That's why I, I, all you have to do is ask if I'm, if I'm not traveling, I'm, I'm coming to Jersey to, to be with your guys because I just love teaching them. And they're so enthusiastic. Like, yeah. you know, you, you, um, you, your crowd is one of the, I mean, I've spoken to a lot of, savvy direct marketing crowds and crowds that you would think are much more interested in what I have to say. I, I can't say I get a more enthusiastic crowd than the crowd I get at, at your events. Well, thank you. And, and the next and event, just so you guys know, know and, and because I know some of you are on here and maybe you off the bounce or something, which I hope you'll stay the whole time. Brian's coming back to the next service business edge event. That's June 12th to 15th. And first off, everybody loved Brian when he was out there. The value was huge. Everybody knows when Brian steps on stage, I'm writing notes like mad. And why I'm really excited this time, I feel like I have like three huge pillars of greatness coming. I got Brian coming. I got Mike McCallowitz coming in and Brian. Mike's knows great. Uh, Mike's awesome. He's incredible. And, and Mike's taught for years. He taught to almost everyone. He came and spoke at almost every one of mine. And then now he's in India. He's traveling all over the world and stuff. Yeah, he's he's and, written like, uh, like eight books or something. Oh. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how you and him can write so many books. I'm on my second and it's painful. I, it's hard. That's hard work. And his books are great. They're so insightful. Yeah. You have to be a little, you gotta be insane. That's why you gotta be in, insane yeah. for that. And, and Brian, and we have one of Brian's great friends and one of my great friends, Jay Abraham is coming out. He was at the last event and he's coming back. And, and Brian, you know, Jay for quite yeah, a while. I, I would say that, you know, I, calling him just my friend, um, I, I, it's way more than that. I mean, he's, he's really one of my key mentors. Um, he's going to write the forward to my new book, hopefully. Um, he is someone that I've known since the mid 1980s. He was an icon helping the newsletter business back then. And, if I, and, and so I met him through that and he's world renowned. I mean, yeah. Damon John from, from uh, Shark Tank, you know, considers Jay his mentor. So, you know, uh, I, yeah, I, I, that, he, that he's coming out for your event is just fantastic. And uh, again, if people haven't heard of him, just do a couple of Google searches on Jay Abraham, marketing icon, and you will just be astounded by the volume of material that he's put out. I mean, he, I mean, I think I'm pretty prolific. I mean, he makes me look like a, like a putz. Oh yeah. He, you know, it was fun last time. And let me say hi to some people. Hey, Jonathan, what's up? Mike Matheny. My mom's in the house. Everybody type in. Hey mom. Hey, hey mom. <laughs> what's you up? You're so my proud mom. of your son. <laughs> my mom is like one of my biggest fans. She like shows up on all my, all my your stuff. Your mom should be so proud of you, Mike. Yeah. 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 And Brian, Brian, what's up? What's up? You know what's uh, interesting, and and Brian, I don't know about you, but just to give you, um, all of you, a little bit of like Jay Abraham when he when he texted me, like he only has one time frame, and and Brian, maybe you'll teach me. The only time frame he has is now, so he's like, um, yeah, Mike, uh, call me, and I'm like. I'm in the middle yeah. of all kinds. Oh, of I get I get a call on Sunday morning from him or a text. It's like. Yeah, you're going to talk to me now. I mean, it's not, and he doesn't do it like, you know, as an egomaniac. He does it like, I thought of you. I need to talk to you. I've got something hot. Yeah. If you want, like, to, you know, share my brilliance, which I do. I mean, I, I've had a lot of Sunday morning. For some reason, Sunday morning seems to be the time he seems to think of me because my blog comes out on 6 a.m. every Sunday morning. Yeah. Like clockwork. And he reads my blog every week, which I'm flattered. And as soon as he reads it, he's usually texting me. Um, so yeah, and actually my, my buddy, David Deutsch, copywriter, I know you want to talk about copy too. Um, David Deutsch, who was a, a great copywriter, a good friend of mine says there are two times actually there's now and not now. 
That's right. And, and the cool thing is like, um, this is what I learned. So, and then I'm going to get into copy because I want to share with everybody on here some stuff they're not hearing anywhere and they're just not thinking of today. But um, I'm going to do a call with Jay uh, tomorrow at, I don't know, two, uh, oh, at 11 o'clock. Nice. And I'm like, my whole team has to go on there because he's going to move so darn fast in, the, in, he calls it the whatever knot. He says he solves knots. I think he creates mental knots that then does fall. actually. I, <laughs> yeah. I've interviewed him many times. I mean, I, I had a big event in 2014, Titans of Direct Response. I interviewed him there. You've been to my mastermind twice where I just put him up front. He, he was actually, he spent a whole, and I don't know if he'll do this at your event at all, but he's amazing, like problem solving um, in real time. So the idea of a hot seat, you know, that a real time hot seat where, at our mastermind, like people signed up in advance and they would give a pretty, you know, perplexing business problem and he would like attack it in real time. It was awesome. It was just awesome. That, was that's awesome. when he's at his I, best. We had him, we had everybody in the room. Um, I said, you know, for Jay to come back out here and want to do more with you guys, he's going to have to hear. So everybody in the room's chant, Jay, Jay. <laughs> out he's like i gotta record that yeah it's like an it's like going to a rock concert with a cat if they lit if they lit matches though I, they shouldn't that building you shouldn't be doing fire yeah, not, none of that stuff none of that stuff so let's talk about you talked about direct response and you know one of the things and i'll tell everybody here one of the things if you ask my children what are what are three things that create success and i i believe they're three kind of foundational things. I mean, marketing is number one. I mean, you got to have marketing and then you got to get leads. You got to know how to track things. And then there's sales. You got to be able to, you know, deliver the value so people say yes. And then there's leadership, right? That's the making sure the money collected and, and the delivery and stuff. But here's the deal. In marketing, Brian, people don't even, they think direct response is a $79 tune-up card. And it says, get your furnace uh, so it doesn't break down. And so I want you to talk a little bit about first, what is direct response? And second, why do words matter in the world of a, a copywriter? Yeah. So I, I've done a speech. I actually did. The, I did a speech in in uh, Hungary, of all places. And the title of the speech to people who really don't even know marketing like we know it in the United States. And they're sort of afraid of it. They think it's kind of evil. Um, you know, because you're taking money from people, you know, that whole thing. And so the title of the speech was Marketing Isn't Everything, It's the Only Thing. Yeah. And it's kind of a spinoff of Vince Lombardi of, you know, winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. And what I teach, and I teach this a lot because I do teach people who are, you know, world-class marketers who will sell anything at, at all costs. And then I also work with a lot of what we'll call heart-based entrepreneurs who, you know, don't want to sell too hard because they're afraid they're going to hurt the feelings of their potential customers or whatever might be going through their head. And what I say is when I say marketing isn't everything, it's the only thing. It's not that I expect you to be a marketing whore. What I expect you to do, though, is to be able to sell and market within the comfort zone that you've got. It's got to be congruent. I, I always talk about congruent marketing. What's congruent with who you are? how you want to sell. But if you're going to sit there and just wait for people to come to your website or come to your, you know, or call you, you know, out of the blue, um, it's, you're, you're mistaken. It's just not going to happen. So, and, and as you said, I think it's very important that, you know, it's not just, you know, simple postcards. It's not just Val Pack. It's everything. Those things are marketing media that you want to use, but you need to track everything. And the other thing I teach, um, you know, implicitly is that you want to be diversified. You want to have, you know, like if you go to a financial planner, they're not a good financial planner is not going to put you all in stocks or all in bonds or all in real estate. They're going to give you a diversified portfolio. And in marketing, it's the same thing. I mean, look what's happening on Facebook right now. I'll be really current. You know, I think the algorithms are going to change or the, the, the way you can advertise on Facebook could change based on what happened. And so diversification is so critical. Yeah. And so everything is not an or in marketing, but everything is an and. So you don't want to be completely 
Like I know companies that had all their business. I know a guy had a $30 million business that it was 100% on Amazon. And one day Amazon didn't like their offer, didn't like their copy. They didn't like what they were doing. Shut him down. He's out of business. Now, if he had some direct mail and he had some other email marketing, he had other things going on, at least he could keep things going while he tried to get back up on Amazon. That's an extreme case. But I think that um, but each one of those media outlets can be tracked, you know, can be, um, you know, you can decide whether I paid for this and I got this back. And that's what we talk about. when We talk about direct response marketing, but marketing. You know, if you're going to sit there and just wait, I always say to people, even if they're heart based and they're mission driven and all of that, and they don't want to sell too hard. I say, well, you've got this great mission that you want to share with the world. Like, why would you want to reach dozens of people when you can reach millions? And you know, and so Brian, you said something really important there, and I don't want to run run past it is, you know, Maybe that example with Amazon seemed like it's not a very common thing, but I'm going to tell you from my perspective, I believe it's going to be a very common thing. And it's I'll, actually more common than I'd like to admit with Facebook yeah. in particular. Look at people with, uh, uh, and I see it all the time with companies in my industry and companies I help, they'll take on pay-per-click. And, and in any good Google AdWord campaign, you got, if you never did any thing at all and you just did that you start getting tons of leads but the problem is google google swings left because there's more money to make left and you're still standing right and it's the same example you say as amazon so yeah. i think that I, is I, I have an expression it's like you know whether it's amazon or let's use that let's say it's facebook they're facebook you're not where give google you're not so here's the other rule of another big rule of thumb that i teach a lot is that you know don't put uh, all your eggs in one basket. That was the easy one. But the other one would be don't, um, uh, you know, don't, don't have too much on a platform that you don't control. So yes, I mean, when I did a mostly direct mail, yes, you could say the U.S. Postal Service controls that platform, but not to the same degree. I mean, they're not, you know, they're not going to look, unless you do something like mail fraud, you know, because you have a, a mailing piece that has some bad claims in it, they're not they're not going to shut you or claims that they think are bad. They're not going to shut you down so quickly. I mean, a lawyer might or the FTC might. But in the case of where it's out there, you know, Facebook, Amazon, um, uh, Google, they can shut you down uh, willy nilly because just because it's their it's their platform and it's not yours. So I just. I, I and, and I'm not saying you should do anything illegal and push the envelope, right? I do think, though, that you have to be very, very conscious of how much of your business is reliant on someone else controlling the platform. Yeah, we used uh, and and Jeff typed in here. Uh, one of the things that we teach at the Service Business Edge, uh, and I've taught a lot, is anything of one is really dangerous, right? One vehicle, one manager, one truck, anything of one is dangerous. So very, take, very us now, take us now, Brian, into some copy stuff. Like why do, why does words even matter? Because, I, and and look, you've been in the world of copy. So just so you guys know, when I introduce, uh, I say Brian Kurtz come out, I consider him one of the great copywriters. Why? Because one, he is, and two, he's been around so many copywriters in the world. But here's the thing. Corporate, big corporate companies, Apple, Coca-Cola, they get this. Small business, copywriting and the concept, understanding it all, it's foreign nature. So let's try to make it unforeign for right. So when you're when you're really trying to get people to move to action, it's a it's it's a skill. You know, it's not, you know, just putting words, as you said, it's not just putting words on paper. And why am I qualified to even talk about this? I've worked with um probably some of the best copywriters who've ever lived over the that have been alive during my lifetime um i've actually done work with them i don't consider myself a copywriter but i do consider myself a great student of copywriting and also i know what to look for to find a good copywriter so i'll, I'll tease a little bit because i think we want to spend a lot more time on this when i'm um with everybody live but um uh, the, the 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 tease will be this um when I look at direct response marketing, I look at that there are three major components. I call it the 40-40-20 rule. 
um, in the success of a campaign. And, and the 40-40-20 rule says that 40% of the, the, of the success of a promotion or a campaign or whatever you're doing is based on the list, the audience that you go to, knowing the list, knowing how they respond. 40% depends on the offer you make. You know, free free consultative services, free book, um, subscription, whatever. And then 20%, the other 20 is actually the creative or the copy. So now you're going to say, well, Brian, I thought you said, and Mike, I thought you said copy was so important. How could it be half as important as offer or list? It's not half as important. However, here's what I want people to understand. Um, that if you hire the best copywriter who ever lived, to write the best promotion for whatever you're doing in advertising, and you mail that to the to a list of people who will never be able to respond, who are not for your would never be able to take you up on your on your offer, and your offer is just whatever it is, you're gonna get zero response because yeah. the audience is already off. Now, if you have a perfect list with an amazing offer and you throw really crappy copy at it. And let's use an example, a postcard mailing to get um, air conditioning services. I don't know why I thought of that example, but why not? Um, now, you will get somebody to hit the 800 number because the list was qualified. The offer might be for a free consultation, but the copy sucks. So you'll get something. And that's, you know, something that people are going to say, look, I'm, 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 I'm dealing with. Um, Co you know the 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 if if I could put great copy to this now if I could now come up with something that's much more compelling than just like a free this or free that or I can tell a story or tell some credibility story about the company and maybe not even do a postcard God forbid and do real envelope with a real letter that you know is really thought out the response rates go through the roof because if you have all those three things list offer and copy working in concert with each other you're 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 cooking with gas yeah and so the the and, and so let me just say one more little thing about copy and then we'll go deep dive when i'm with you live um there's everybody's got a story and and the interesting thing about the businesses that that you serve is that it it's def and i talked about this before when i've talked to your folks it, it can be easily viewed as a commodity. Like, what's the difference? And when you're, what, and how I define that is that if you're looking at something that you can define as a commodity, you're looking at um, something that all you're going to differentiate is by price. Yeah. The only thing that's different is price. So why would I pay more for an air conditioning service for over someone else? It's got to be other things. Maybe it's personalized service. Maybe it's that the person who's doing it has 30 years experience versus the cheaper guy who's only been doing it for two. I'm just giving you like the tip of the iceberg here. Yeah. But you've got to tell that story. You've got to tell that story. Because if you don't tell that story, you're sunk. And, and, and all you're going to be doing is competing on price. So there's a perfect example in your world where copy could make all the difference in the world. And it's copy and format. So if everybody else in your area in heating and air conditioning is doing postcards and you're doing a little mini magazette kind of thing with an offer, you're going to stick out. Why do you have a magazette? I have a magazette or something that looks like a magazine called Magalogs actually. And it's like, you know, it could be eight pages, but it tells a story. It's got Mike's picture on the front saying, I built gold metal from the ground up. You know, I love the picture of you and your partner, Rob, you know, digging ditches in the snow. Right. And so it's like, we started there and that's why we're the best for you. If I'm a consumer and I'm looking at that story first and we don't, we're not talking about competing on price. I just gave you an example where you could differentiate yourself from your competition like that, but you've got to have the right tools. You've got to have a copywriter. You've got to understand how the copy relates to the individual list you're doing. You might even want to have different versions of copy to different segments of your lists. And again, we, I want to go deep dive on that when we're live, because this is like what I live for. I mean, this is like I came out of the list business. I was a list segmentation expert, much more than a copy expert. But boy, when I saw the power of speaking copy to list, and I'll leave you with this. 
and I'm not going to get political at all. And I won't even tell you who I voted for. But the the election of Donald Trump as president of the United States is a marketing case history for the ages. It should be studied forever. And it's actually I, I wrote a blog post once. It was called The Wall with a Door. And what I was talking about there, and again, I'm not I'm not telling you I voted for, and this is not about whether I like Donald Trump or don't like Donald Trump, or whether I like Hillary Clinton or don't like Hillary. It's nothing to do with that. Just a marketing conversation. And the marketing conversation is when when Donald Trump understood his list, right? Yeah. As well as anybody. And when he spoke to them, it was the language to the list. That's a perfect example in a in something that everybody that's watching this can understand. And when he said, I'm going to build a wall, a big, beautiful wall, and I'm going to put a door in it, no one doesn't understand that language. Right. Right. And then so one of the greatest copywriters of all time, and I don't know that Donald Trump studied Gene Schwartz, but Gene Schwartz, one of the best copywriters of all time. I don't think Donald Trump studied Gene Schwartz, but Gene Schwartz said, there is your audience, there is the language, and there are the words that they use. So another big aspect of copy is finding out the words that your audience uses and then you putting them into your copy. The, 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 you'll lose them immediately the minute you start using words they don't understand, they've never used before, whatever. So, you know, those are some like, you know, just stuff off the top of my head. But I can talk about this, this topic specifically for days. Yeah, we're definitely- at least I'll get a couple hours with you. Yeah, we're going to go deeper into that uh, when you come out at the June event. And I think what you just said, well, you said a lot of powerful golden nuggets for those that you're listening to take and and put into application right now. But one of the last thing you just said, right, find the words that, that your audience, your customers are already using that tweak. Last thing I want to just and we're well, just going to give a quick little tip. So yeah. maybe not as much for your audience, but. Find out if you could find out like all the books your your they buy or some books they might buy or books they likely to buy or what you know understand your audience well enough maybe from a demographic standpoint going on Amazon and seeing reviews of of kinds of people that you do that's one technique another might be forums like I think in your case you could go to like you know we used to have a thing in my town like they called it you know the town's west front porch and so people would go on and compare you know notes about um, do you know a good contractor? Do you know this? Do you know that? Hanging out in those forums just to see how people talk about the industry. I mean, yeah. wouldn't it be great to see how they view you and then you come back and use that in your copy? I mean, I, that's a perfect example right there. That's real good. Yeah, and they, you can take your Google reviews, what people are saying already. I think what Brian just said is- Oh, Yelp, you know, Yelp reviews, excellent. Yeah, take that magic and put it in. Let me, here's what I want you guys to know. Not all, um, I would say a lot of companies that do great things are not marketers. A lot of website design companies are not marketers. So they build a site, but they're missing marketing. And then a lot of direct mail people are graphic designers, but they're not copywriters. So I want to let you guys know with all the, and, and it's the last thing we're going to talk about is going to be about the, the massive amount of wasted money today because you got a beautiful graphic piece. Brian already told you, sell to the, send it to the wrong list. You go fishing for whales with guppy bait. You don't catch whales. You, ca right. you, you catch guppies, right? And so now you get this beautiful piece, great graphic designs, and the copy stinks. They're not a marketer. So the colors, they're great. They look great. It doesn't talk. Right. How much money are people wasting today? You must throw up when your mail comes. Yeah, there's actually, and I don't, I don't, this is not universal, but there's a, there's an old saying in direct marketing that, that ugly sells. And, you know, I can, I, I know of so many examples, like for, I'll give you an example online. You know, how many times does someone read a lot more of a text email than a highly designed HTML email? Because yeah. it's personal. It's, it feels like it's like just for me. Same thing works in every medium. Now I'm not saying that designing stuff shouldn't happen. That's not what I'm saying, but you have to know your audience. And over design stuff to an audience that could care less about design and is only really interested in the offer and the value and the story. That's, you know, you got to know that. You got to know that. A great point about, you know, over design being like ridiculously, you know, a, a ridiculous waste of money. Yeah. Great that, point. Yeah. 
Great point. Well, here's what I want to tell everybody. First off, Brian, thank you for being on today. Um, I appreciate you delivering value for all of you, Mike Matheny, Lindsay, Bill, all of you guys. I know there's massive, massive value. And we're only on for about 30 minutes. And if you can imagine you just applied that, you've already moved the needle because, I mean, some of you are spending out, you know, you're sending out 5,000 direct mail or you're redoing your website. Like the nuggets he just gave you, like you get that dialed in. This is what people do. They dial in on words and marketing to get great results, okay? A lot of you on here, if you want to come out, and, and some of you will, I'm sure, you will come out to the Service Business Edge because you just want to spend time with Brian because he's super nice, super smart guy. You want to spend time with me. Um, then I we'll want to spend time with you. Wait a minute. I want to spend time with you. I, I know you do. I know you do. We love him when we're together spending time. And then Mike Michalowicz is coming out. And, I want to spend uh, time with him too. Yeah. And then Jay Abraham's going to come out. I don't want to spend any time with him. No, me, me neither. <laughs> it just confuses me sometimes. And I told Jay, I said, Jay, you're the only person I had an hour and a half conversation. Me and Rob stared at each other for an hour and a half, did not know a word you said. And the last two minutes, it's like angels and, and God hit me in the head. And I was like, there's yeah. the answer. And I said, yeah, because yeah, that, you know, he's so wisdom. Like he's like, yeah, it happens like that or whatever he said. I was like, oh my goodness. So yeah, yeah, excellent. But, Brian, thank you. Look forward to seeing you, Service Business Edge. Everybody that wants to come out, um, we got some VIP seats. We got many levels. Pretty much if you're a business owner, we got a level of seat that will fit your butt in it to come out and play with us. Otherwise, please listen. Go back and listen to this again. Get your teams to listen to this again. Hey, Brian, tell them real quick your uh, your book and where they can find it so they can go out if they want to buy a book. Or yeah, something. my book, um, uh, again, I don't make a penny on it. So this is like a great sales pitch. Um, so if you go to thelegendsbook.com, www.thelegendsbook.com, and you go there, my, my book is a great book because it's a, it, it, it profiles six legends of advertising who are actually old-time advertising guys and copywriters who were actually direct marketers way back before there was even direct marketing. And it profiles all of them. And if you buy the book at thelegendsbook.com, follow the instructions there, you also get access to all these bonuses I put together, which will really be useful for you. There are these, they call them swipe files, which are the greatest ads these six guys ever wrote. There are videos with all of these, with three of them. And then there's actually a downloadable PDF of a, another classic direct marketing book that's illustrated and annotated called Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins. You can download that great book for guys to read. It's not advanced. It's really a solid book. And my book, it's like, I don't know, it's like 16 bucks on Amazon. It's called The Advertising Solution. But buy it through thelegendsbook.com. And if you buy it there, here's a bonus. You get to you get opted into my list and I blog every Sunday about direct marketing wisdom. I don't use my list for affiliates, so I'm not going to spam you, nor am I going to sell you a lot of stuff. Um, just direct marketing education. Um, so thelegendsbook.com definitely. And, I, and you know, in, in, we've have given my book away in the past, or at least we, you know, gave it to, I think, your, your VIPs. Yeah. And, you know, I just love giving I just love the book because I wrote it with my buddy, Craig Simpson who you know really well, too, is a direct mail expert. And we just had a, a blast writing the book. And I think it's a great book for your audience, too. It's just it'll give them access to, you know, how to write a sales letter and, you know, the kinds of things that they really need to know and how to create a, a, a compelling offer. Um, and you can adapt it to any industry or anything, even service businesses. So um, the legendsbook.com, definitely. And I'd love to have more of your tribe on my list only because... I've I've loved being with your tribe. I'm so excited to be able to be at your event again, Mike. I I do consider it an honor. I don't, you know, I don't just go everywhere people ask me to go and you know, you always have me at hello as long as as long as I'm around, you know, I want to be with you. I want to I want to be around the people that you're training because I think even though we're in completely different industries, we we overlap so much in our desire and our you know, our heart that's, that's, you know, about teaching people and about making them the best they can be. And, you know, you're a marketing badass too. So 
you know, it's like, <laughs> right, exactly. And so we have, we have a lot more in common than people would ever think, um, knowing your industry and where I came from. Um, but boy, I, I consider you and I, I mean, you're, you're a brother in crime, you know? Thank you. Thank you. He, he umpires, I swing a sword, you know, that's. Yeah. Sword. Your martial arts are my umpire. And the only thing is like, you might get your head sliced off. I just get dirt kicked in my face by a coach, you know? Good, good point. Well, Brian, thank you so much. Look forward to having you out. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. Go back. And those of you that want to come and play at the Service Business Edge event, go to Service Business. You got to uh, go. You got to go. Edge.com and uh, be ready to play full out. We'll change the game. Have a great day. Boom. Boom.